Everybody, thanks so much for listening to the podcast. In this first segment, we talk about a lot. We talk about the U.S. You have been trying to beat Cuba, but they couldn't. No, they did. <laughs> Seven nothing. It was rough. I had to sit through the whole damn thing. <laughs> Plus, we talk about some more. Uh, yes, and it is uh, the the end of Hispanic Heritage Month. <laughs> but we we I think we figure out who Alexis's dad is. <laughs> and we're also joined by Antti Agoli of the New York Cosmos, our first New York Cosmos player on the show. We're excited to have him on, uh, talking about uh, soccer, talking about the Albania Albanian national team. And donuts. What That's you know right. about? You don't know nothing about donuts until you <laughs> met Auntie Agoli. So all this and more today on the Cooligans. Hi, I'm John Strong. I'm the large bald man who stands next to Stu Holden when you watch soccer on Fox Sports. You are listening to the Cooligans. Yeah, baby. Get the energy up on a wow. Tuesday. Woo! Got the studio going up <laughs> on a Tuesday. <laughs> Let's go. All right. <laughs> I forgot what that song was all of a sudden. That was a couple years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was. It was popping. It was popping. When Drake did the remix, it was over. Maybe, you know, Drake should have remixed the Cuban National thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's uh, maybe that's the next remix. Who knows? Ooh, Any, a, a, anybody? Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Thank you uh, for watching. My name is Christian Polanco. Yes, it is. And my name is Alexis Guerrero. All right. We are your favorite stand-up comedians. By far. By, well, that's it. That, well, you know what? Sentence over. Uh, period. <laughs> that. <laughs> Done. End. Fiend. <laughs> okay, Bill Burr. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm waiting for him at the top. <laughs> You know what I mean? When nope. you get here, <laughs> let me know. Yeah. Do Bill Burr talk about soccer? <laughs> you ain't got nothing to watch. It's us. Uh, yes, uh, we are your favorite stand-up comedians that host the funniest soccer show that you've ever watched or listened That's to. That's right. But it's not just that, Christian. It is not exclusive. When we that. look through the things that this show is. <laughs> the things. It's not just It's many that. things. Many things. <laughs> The other thing besides the funniest soccer podcast oh, also happens to be the gulliest soccer podcast. That's right. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, uh, so uh, you know, buckle up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to get gully because we're going to talk about a snuff film we went to go see live in D.C. That's right. We did go to Audi Field. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I said they shouldn't have put that up on the big board. No, uh, you know, no. <laughs> they should have handed out. What was that movie that uh, Sandra Bullock was in? With the blind side? What was that blind side? That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, what was the one where she was wearing the blindfold? Um, yeah, the bird box. Bird box, They yes. should have handed out those. It the- should have been Bird Box Merch Day <laughs> <laughs> for all the fans. <laughs> My God. Yes, and if you didn't uh, get to witness it or see or watch it on television. Witness is a great Witness, term. I mean, you, like, you're <laughs> if you if you were there, you're an accomplice. Yeah, I know, yo. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you guys get tickets for Exhibit A? <laughs> <laughs> because Cuba did play against the U.S. men's national team, oh. uh, and it was Alexis's, uh, you know, and uh, my first time getting to see the Cuban national team in person. Yes. Uh, and, I, yeah, it, it, we wish it probably would have gone a little bit better. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm glad USA won. I'm just saying, you know, at some point, you know, can we get a mercy rule? <laughs> you know, because you know? at one point, uh, Alexis was crying into a Cuban flag. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <Mi patria! laughs> you know, it was it was difficult to watch. But yeah, uh, I think watching that game hurt more than my family having to leave the country during communism. I'm just going to say that. Okay. I'm just going to say, I don't know if it's hundred percent true. You know what? You know, <laughs> you know, you know I mean, we had to balance be, the two. Yeah. Might be apples to uh, absolute torture, and, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but who yeah. knows? I mean, yeah. my mother went through a hard labor camp for two years, but she didn't have to watch a bunch of young men. You know, lose I, w- I wish I was in her shoes. Yeah, I know. I'd trade spots with me, ma. <laughs> Take the pain from me, ma. <laughs> because, <laughs> because she's yes. going to hit me when she hears this. I want you to know that in my thirties, married doesn't matter. She will hit me when she hears this. Uh, yes, it was uh, a little difficult for the Cuban national. They, they did lose seven to nothing, but yeah. they, they gave up six goals in the first half and only gave up one. In the second. So if we're counting by Cuban rules, which is you only count the second half, <laughs> maybe I, I'm making that up. We didn't lose that bad. It wasn't that embarrassing. No, okay. No. <laughs> that what, practice, 45, we the, did in the beginning. The scrimmage. Yeah, that was mad cute. Up top was yeah. kind of nice. It was like, okay, these yeah. guys are actually for real, for real. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my thing about the rope, dope. At some point, you have to spring off the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hit them hard. You we know? didn't do that. We just. If there was the- another 45 minutes. <laughs> 
Bro, it might have I mean, it would have been it might have been 12 to 3. Yeah, so you that's know? Not... <laughs> which is respectable. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was cool uh being there, getting to sort of uh We got to I got to talk. We got to talk to a Cuban. Actually, we talked to Nelson. Yes, Nelson yes, the Cuban. Johnston, uh, yeah, which uh, well, the we'll, goalkeeper, the goalkeeper. Yeah, and that was a, a, a cool experience because a lot of the Cuban players didn't want to talk to anybody. No, they. I mean, yeah, I mean, who would want to talk to anybody after that? Exactly. Was... exactly. You know how Cubans are. Yeah. Eso no pasó. Yeah, you walk away, you pretend it never happened. Get yourself a little bit of a brandy dip with a cigar. You'd be all right. Exactly. Uh, but I mean, you know, heads were down. Also, there's not much they can really say and. A player had defected the day before, and you know reporters were being mad egregious and asking about it. It was so, that, and that was a thing. So, if people do not know this, this is a common thing. Whenever Cuba plays in uh, in the U.S., or really outside of Cuba, they they defect. Some yeah. usually usually one one to three players. Uh, you know, there's like I think Vegas does like odds on it, right? Yeah, over under, <laughs> over under. <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna who's gonna defect? But one player did defect. Uh, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of guys who train in running. I mean, if you're you're specifically built, okay, you know, you know is, what I mean. <laughs> this is like the the defection World Cup. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> mean, that's the reason why Cuba doesn't feel they stamina swimming team. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Them dudes are all in America. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, so that that so we went to the press conference uh with the with the 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 manager uh, for yeah. Cuba and. There was oh, by a, the way, new English, so you couldn't talk slick. You know what I mean? <laughs> he knew some in, English. Uh, but he had a really good grasp of English. Not enough to do the whole conference, the whole yeah, press yeah. conference in English. But he was, there was a, a certain, t- the first question right off he, the bat. that he fielded was like, yo, where's your play at? Yeah, my man takes a 7 0 loss, <laughs> goes in the locker room, talks to a team of average age of 22, yeah. and then sits down. First chance he sits <laughs> down. First question is, Yo, what happened to the dude who, who left the team yesterday? Yo, what, yeah, what, what you know about that? Uh, you might want to elaborate. <laughs> and he's like, y'all want to get me killed? <laughs> Why don't y'all tweet about Hong Kong? <laughs> you know, it's a little bit more, <laughs> a little Damn. easier nowadays. Yeah, he was he was frustrated because obviously uh, because of the loss and. Uh, but he was and the gun to his family's head back home. <laughs> yeah, is that he's what? not allowed to talk about he's it. Not, exactly. He was just like, "Yo, talk to me about the players that are here." Yeah. I don't know about Please. anybody else. Please stop mentioning that guy. <laughs> uh, but it was, a, you know, it, it was a weirdly, um, I don't know. I, even for me, it felt like kind of significant seeing a, a Caribbean nation go up against the U.S. And obviously, it is David against a uh, Goliath. Yeah, and and but. He 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 went up in that press conference and was and went in there confidently and said, "Hey, look, I'm playing with a bunch of kids, right? And yeah. and that is because all my players leave." He right? did what you expect a Cuban to do, which is blame the children. <laughs> it ain't me; they're young as hell. What do you expect me to do? <laughs> I'm a great niño. coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Esos son jovencitos, coño. No tienen la cabeza para eso. But it was uh, it was the best a- player I had ran yesterday. He took off. He's defected. <laughs> it was a, sh- a a cool show of. Uh, of of some sort of uh, I don't know strength and confidence from the Caribbean nations because a lot of people complain about why are we playing like, for the, as from the U S perspective like why are we playing in these nations games they're not important but for these Caribbean nations these opportunities wildly important this experience is huge yeah uh, for where the else are they gonna lose seven 0 you know what it, I mean like you gotta play these games <laughs> they're not gonna lose seven 0 to Bermuda no they might to Curacao <laughs> these teams are looking tight. <laughs> So it, it's a, but it was a, a cool thing and it was an honor kind of to. It to was be there. I, the fact that I got to speak to one of the Cuban national team players. It legit made me emotional. Like I'm like, oh my god, you know, like I just want to, I want to sit down and talk to you and find out what's going on in the island or whatever. And he was like, yo, I got a plane to catch. I was like, alright we'll do your thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was quick. You know, like, emotions aren't a real Cuban thing. You know? exactly, exactly. We save it for weddings, quinceañeras. That's pretty much all we do. You know, <laughs> why are you crying, dog? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, is your daughter getting married right now? <laughs> Tighten up, my dude. <laughs> hey, we just want to cut in real quick to talk about our sponsor for this episode. Exactly. See Geek looking out for you. Yeah. They're looking the best. out for us. They're the best. Exactly. They love us. They think we're amazing. We think they're amazing. And you know why? Because when we want 
tickets to events. Like when we were going down to uh, DC, right? A friend of ours called and said, hey, I think I want to go to the USMNT versus Cuba game. I said, yo, pull up SeatGeek. And they had it right there. They had it green, yellow, red. If you want to sit close to the sidelines, it was a little expensive. Those were in red. Green teats all over the place for really good deals. Because what they do is they go across all the other ticket sellers and they find you the best deal. So you don't have to. What are you going to go to like eight, ten different apps? You're going to download them all? Why don't you just get one that tells you what the best are? You're going to lose your battery life. Your phone's going to die. You're going to be stranded. You're going to be stranded somewhere. Obviously, not downloading SeatGeek is obviously detrimental to your your life, your family, your family's life. You want that to happen? (laughs) Or imagine you do download all those and then you go to send, you know, this this new young lady you met a dick pic and you can't. You got a room left on your phone. (laughs) Of course, Alexis (laughs) had to throw that in this promo. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I'm sure CK will love that. (laughs) But what I'm saying is save all the space and time that you need on your phone. Download the CK gap. It finds you all the best possible deals. And go ahead and download. And guess what? Just because you put in Cooligans, they're going to give you $10 off your first order. Exactly. So use the promo code cool again you will get ten dollars off your first order it's it's that simple and it'll it, i guess it'll save your life i think <laughs> yeah. that's the best way to put it 100 <laughs> percent. we covered usa destroying cuba's hope for a future exactly. in soccer but now let's get a gift how about that huh? exactly. a nice this, gift. this is uh at least an opportunity to cheer ourselves up after what we just that's saw right. and, th- and today happens to be the final day of hispanic heritage month buddy Alexis. we did it we survived another one we did it <laughs> good we can celebrate now nice. uh <laughs> we, we and- could release the dubs what happens <laughs> at the end <laughs> that's right and those and our doves have neck tattoos that's right <laughs> and by the way when we say release we mean give them back the clothes they came in with <laughs> and they're back <laughs> uh but no we got uh, uh uh, uh, some some gifts as a as a as a show of appreciation for Hispanic Heritage Month. I think. I just, Who knows? It's an unboxing. It's we an never unbox- know. What's we don't in know it. what's inside. We never know what's inside. Why don't you open up yours first? Okay, it's a little smaller. Let's get this one going. All right, this is. I'll start this just in case there's like a note in here of some sort. Okay. All right. This says okay. Uh, okay, I know who this is from. This is, okay. This says. Hello, Christian. Congratulations on the show, and wish you uh, much more success. Uh, your passion for the game will take you anywhere you set yourself to. Please accept this humble gift as it is our first soccer-inspired product uh, with the sale of every watch. So this is a watch. With the sale of every watch, we donate soccer gear to kids in need. Any help you can provide to drive our mission forward would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we would love to help you wearing this watch. <laughs> so, uh, this is from uh, F- uh, Foot Love. Foot Love, the, oh, okay. the, 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 the watch uh, company. I've seen... Now, I don't wear watches. Why not? Because my, my grandfather always said, never show somebody else what they don't have. And when he passed away, he never wore a watch. So in his honor, wow. I don't wear a watch. So on top of watches, it, it's also what? like uh, Vegetables. Aff- he said, don't <laughs> you dare. Don't show, don't show affection, yeah, care, yeah. or respect for any other human being. Emotion or for the people <laughs> who wear watches. Uh, this is pretty cool. Okay. All right. You open that. Oh, I know what this is. All right. That's a, this yeah. is the the box for uh uh, uh Foot Love. Oh, oh look at, look at this. this! All right, let me open this. While you open that, oh okay. Look at this. We, we got- were just tweeting about these guys, Oakland Roots. If you don't know, what size is this? This feels like it's oh, no, it's a medium. This is wild. It's just a watch. What do you mean it's wild? no, no? But it comes <laughs> inside like a soccer ball. Oh, this- that's pretty cool. This is incredible. Well, you open that. I mean, here we go. Oakland Roots. If you don't know, this is a lower league team, <laughs> uh, NISL. Uh, dude, these guys are doing some incredible things. They have a video of their players just getting hyphy, hyphy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, just dancing to blow the whistle. I think that's it's how- the most Oakland. Yeah, yeah. That's. I think that's the trial for the players. They're, they're like, uh, they don't even check to see if they could dribble a ball or it's shoot. Like, dude, they're I can't like, play. Can you? It's a dance competition. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> dude, I can't play soccer. It doesn't matter. You get lit on the dance floor. <laughs> so we know. Oh. We know you got some skill. All right, look at this. This is incredible. Thank you so much, Oakland Roots. Thank you so much for love. Uh, this is dope. It's come. The watch comes inside of a like a leather sock, a leather bound soccer ball. Look at this. Look at that. That's beautiful. This is so f- fire. I feel like you could use that as like a like a like a toiletry case okay. after you're done with the watch. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Let me see the watch. I love how Alexis is always thinking about the toilet. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and we know sometimes I'll just use my pants. You know? <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Well done. Thank you so much, Philo. This job. is uh this is really cool. Appreciate it very, very much. I'm gonna let me see. I'll put this on. Let's see if I can get this on. Shouts uh, to Oakland Roots once again, dude. I can't wait to wear that hoodie. 
yeah, the the uh, there's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of clubs, a lot of teams like every, Forward Madison. Forward, there's so many clubs in the lower league that are just doing wild, cool stuff. Exactly, and people are always sort of wondering like, what you know, be, because U.S. soccer, uh, you know, we don't have promotion relegation, but like, how is it can, that lower you know lower league clubs can they can stand out? And a lot of times it's like. That by by having a unique be identity, a merch brand be a mer- be a, well yeah selling dope like gear yeah. like wh- why not like why bug eaters can do it Oakland Roots can do it why can't that be a part of like the the because you see like people in like England rocking Oakland Roots stuff and also and and this is a hundred percent true okay this is all fact I'm not making this up Premier League merch tends to be trash okay. All right, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna. It's true. Some shots fired. It, think about it. When was the last time you saw like a really dope hat or a really dope like? Sometimes the jackets, the warm up stuff. If you're willing to wear something a bit more athletic, yeah, it's cool. But just like lifestyle stuff, ain't that dope? I agree. It's okay. A, it's a, Oakland it, Roots has a much better merch game than Arsenal. Okay, that's a bold statement, right? right? And you're an Arsenal supporter. And here's the thing: if you want to prove me wrong, just send it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's compare side to side. What well, I'm saying is, I'll wear this Oakland Roots hoodie, and you send me your best, and then Christian will tell me during a fashion show, which happens in between segments here, there's which no, one's better. Well, there's no reason why we can't have a, a cool against fashion show. There is absolutely no reason why we can't. Did you know I was the vice president of the modeling club in high school? Okay, let's break this down because this one, first of all, this seems like a lie, okay? Yeah, 100% true. I will bring in my, my, why, my okay, yearbook. What were you modeling exactly? What is day to day? Day to day, what is... What is a meeting like at, for the, at the modeling club? Me and a bunch of hot ladies. Okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, it was me and like two other boys. And we were suggested that we join the modeling club because if they didn't have enough numbers, they wouldn't be able to do their show. Got so it. the girls were like, yo, it would be great if you joined. I was like, all right, let's do this. It was just me and a bunch of dope chicks. Yo, this is amazing. And then all of a sudden, they're like, who wants to run for vice president? I was like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I won. I won the election. Okay. Dude, yeah. By like a landslide. First election I won. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even try to like finagle my way to the top. Okay. And uh, so then as what Here's the my duties? favorite part. Hold what? on. Okay. But you know what the responsibilities are of the vice president of the modeling club? What? Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> and honestly, I've never been more 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 appropriately positioned for something in my entire life okay and then you 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 bought a bunch of clothes and you did a whole fashion show and that's when a a bunch of cops my friend was looking for his special shoes that he was gonna wear with his suit in uh in uh in his car and the cops a bunch of undercover cops like they thought we were dealing drugs and they looked through the whole thing and my fat ass had to explain to this cop no no sir i'm a model i almost got shot I almost got beat and shot because I said, no, officer, He's like, yeah. I'm a model. And thank God I had, I had the tickets to the model show. And the cop was so angry. He's like, hey, yo, Johnson, get over here. You'll never believe it. These, these kids are models. Yeah. And they're like, even the fat one? <laughs> Apparently, he's the vice president. <laughs> yes, because I'm sure he was just, he was just like, you, you, you know that lying to an officer is a felony, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Impersonating a model might be a felony. <laughs> I just love that there were real drug dealers like a block away, like, get out of here, there's cops here. And they drove off with whatever it was these guys. I mean, I'm talking about like eight, nine caprices. Just, yeah, yeah. It was Man, wild. Dogs it, everywhere. It's it's just incredible. You can't even be, uh, you know, an honest model <laughs> you in know? Newark, New Jersey, you- without somebody <laughs> thinking that you're a criminal. How <laughs> dangerous is it to be a model in a city like Newark? Let me tell you, I almost died for the for the love of it. You know, it was the art. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to some drama. Let's all right? do it. Because uh, this happened uh, after we uh, filmed last week. but Which we've, we've constantly asked. The soccer world. The world is soccer and adjacent. Yeah. If you're going to have something that sounds like it might fit on Cooligans, yeah. 
Could you mention it before we record on a Tuesday? <laughs> is that possible? That'd be nice. Just you know, look look out, out look look out for us. I know right? this might have broke like minutes after we recorded, right? Yeah. So, but this was a a, a very strange, uh, you know, it, it hit its peak very quickly and then sort of disappeared. It, it sort of got like almost not resolved, but uh, you know, it, it just it reached this uh peak of like how much mystery there was. And if you don't know, uh, if you didn't see this, uh, Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy, uh, wife wives. Of uh, Wags. Wayne Ro- <laughs> Wags of of Wayne Rooney and Jamie Vardy, two yeah. level headed, regular <laughs> old guys, you good know? old chaps. You out know, here. they just like to have. They like to do their things in person, <laughs> just conversation, <laughs> relax, sit down, with cardigan sweaters. You know I, what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but the um, if you didn't see this, uh, uh, Colleen Rooney put out a uh, a tweet, uh, which is a, which was a screen cap of a note. Uh, that and she- there it is. And you know this: when there's a screen cap of a note, you're either retiring or it's about to get hot. <laughs> exactly. There's never been like, hey, you know, I'm really good friends with my, my friend yeah. Rebecca Vardy. It's never anything. Just no, positive I just want to say I love Rebecca Vardy. <laughs> Everything's smooth. No, no, because it doesn't fit in the tweet. So no. it has to be. It has to be in in, in uh, the longer format. But she basically is saying uh, that. There were there were stories that were getting leaked to the tabloids. Yeah. And Colin Rooney didn't understand where, where it was could they be coming from? Who it's coming from inside the house. It was yeah. one of those things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and Colleen Rooney did a, a the the a piece of de- a detective work that we've never I, I, I didn't know it was capable. I didn't know that that she had these skills. Uh, if you're Wayne Rooney, you should be very scared of your wife right now. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> she is. She has figured out a way to use the tools at her at her disposal. <laughs> OK. And solve a crime. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, stories were getting leaked to, to, to the sun, which is a big tabloid out uh, in the UK. Right. And. Uh, she didn't know how the stories were getting out. So what she uh, started doing. But hold on. This is all in the note. She explains all this. But this is what I love about the note. She doesn't reveal who it is until the end. And she throws a bunch of dots, like a whole bunch of ellipses. <laughs> exactly. You to, to, to build the suspense. Okay. <laughs> she hit a drum roll on this there. Is, I think I think this is an excerpt of her screenplay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. Well, she made a film noir movie. <laughs> and at the end, Humphrey Bogart walks in and reads this note. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so she but basically she's trying to figure out who who is uh, leaking these stories she blocks everyone on her instagram except for rebecca vardy yeah on her finsta she had the finsta yeah for the, like the real stuff for her friends rebecca vardy's one of them blocks everybody from seeing her stories except one person pulls up a couple bootleg stories, one of which is a leak in the basement. So <laughs> she uses a leak to find a leak. <laughs> Yo, this is... Uh, that story makes it into the sun or one of those other tabloid-ass yes. papers. She learned a little bit out of uh, out of D.C. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, she was... She she met up with some uh, operatives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So she, but yo, she didn't just stop at one. She put a couple of them up. Exactly. And every time it made it in the paper and there was only one person who saw that story exactly and you know how instagram you see who sees your story uh-huh you know we all we all look it's like oh when it's you like, lurking you lurk okay all right i got some some these girls got some eyes on me okay, okay. you you looking at the story also <laughs> stop looking at all of them you're making a hot when my wife pulls up my story <laughs> why are these girls looking at your story i don't go to their phones <laughs> and make them look at my story and we all know it's for the food okay <laughs> ain't nobody looking at my story they don't know that i was a vice president of the modeling club <laughs> they don't know that okay they can I- assume from the <laughs> Poses, <laughs> um, but yeah, but this, this man looks like he had training. This, this <laughs> was pretty incredible. You don't see stuff like this, no. Uh, it's, and, uh, on such a also large... the way it's revealed, yeah. All the whole story explaining it. You got none. You can't get out of it. It was dot 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 dot. <laughs> Rebecca Vardy's account, yeah, dude. Doesn't even say Rebecca Vardy. Yeah, you. And if you haven't gone to the actual tweet, just say it. The 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 comments themselves are entertaining within themselves because they all gifs of just being like. <gasps> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, uh, every other faction of Twitter became involved in this. Yes. Our friends who are in gay Twitter, our friends in black Twitter, everybody was like, yo, Alexis Christian, could you tell us who these two people are? <laughs> this seems like something we want to be involved in. Uh, so, Ray Sani was like, please, yes. please tell me. Yes. So uh, everybody loves some juicy gossip. Yeah. And, and and amongst wags, it's even uh, more entertaining. But rec- this is better than any Real Housewives episode ever. I, I agree. Uh, Except I- the table flipping. Shouts to Jersey. <laughs> 
That's right. <laughs> That's all this uh, saga was missing. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just flipping a tea table yeah, over. You <laughs> and then just bangled the earrings everywhere. But Rebecca Vardy did respond and, mm-hmm. and said that. I mean, she gave like a lame kind of excuse. No, you. Could, I caught the lie in there. What, what was it? What was it? What was your <laughs> The part where she where she goes uh, this very week. Uh, things have already happened in my account. This multiple times, <laughs> including this week. It's too much information. You got yeah, caught. Yeah, yeah. Think of your Dominican uncles. You know what I mean? They yeah. come home they smelling come- like a different <laughs> perfume. You know what I mean? Yeah, you so- give it too much information. In fact, the car, which I told you last week, <laughs> is having problems. I had it again. Too much. Exactly. You laid yes. it on too thick. <laughs> because she, she gave like a... People have my password. Yeah. And I don't need any money. I'm not trying to make money. And- Why would I? I thought we were friends. Why didn't you call me? <laughs> Why didn't you call me? Is like basically like, yo, I could have, I yeah. could have stopped this from hitting the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just quite, uh, it's just quite incredible. Uh, Hilarious. For, for something like this to happen. And it, it's- and then the Daily Mail caught up with her saying, arguing with Rooney, with uh, Colleen Rooney, is like, this is a quote, is like arguing with a pigeon. You can tell it that you're right and it's wrong, but it's still going to isht in your hair. <laughs> that's okay. a quote. <laughs> that, and that's from Rebecca Vardy. That's from Rebecca Vardy. Interesting. Okay. So they're all loading for bear. And all I got to say is, yo, Fubo Sports, let's beat Andy Cohen to this <laughs> show, okay? <laughs> we need to- The have- Real Housewags of England? <laughs> Yeah, because those recap shows, right? At the end of the season, oh they all God. talk, and then somebody throws a, a, a punch, <laughs> obviously, at some point. Someone's going to throw a pigeon in this one. It's going to be wild. I just, what's all this pigeon talk? I feel like it's an attack on NYCFC. <laughs> yeah, <Why? no. laughs> or is this all just low-key marketing for the MLS playoffs? <laughs> you know what, Kali Rooney? You're a genius. Yo, <laughs> Kali. <laughs> well done. Yeah. <laughs> right? Kali's husband plays on DC United. United. Rebecca Vardy brings up pigeons. <laughs> so next, I guess someone's going to be caught drinking a Red Bull. <laughs> oh, if uh, if DC United defeat Toronto FC, they'll play against NYCFC. Uh, and there you go. And there we go. Okay. And the halftime will be a boxing match between <laughs> Colleen and Rebecca. <laughs> all right. It's just a master plan. Yeah, this is all Don Garber, man. <laughs> <laughs> Props to you, Don Garber. Yeah, Donnie G. <laughs> Honestly. Genius. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, excited about this segment because we are going to be playing uh, an interview that we did with Sean Johnson. That's right. The Uh, Milkman. Remember that? The Milkman. Yeah, that was uh, that was the popular name in uh, his nickname in in Chicago. But that's right. It didn't really didn't really make it over here. Didn't translate. People are like, what's a milkman? (laughs) <laughs> sure you know I mean? it's just like is uh that's uh you know my i think that's my dad yeah look at it, the blacksmith <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, but no we, the, i feel like the last couple of weeks we've been uh or the employed millennial no one knows <laughs> the, the last couple of weeks What's nycfc up? has been doing a lot of uh different events in the area well and, yeah they got three weeks with nothing to do <laughs> <laughs> they need to fill up the time you yeah. know <laughs> it's like we're paying these guys i know <laughs> i mean it might as well i don't know paint i don't know do something <laughs> uh so the, yeah they opened a uh a, a new pitch in queens uh, that's right. At, and in Corona Park in Flushing Meadows. We were there. That was dope. That we were there. And then, but this was from uh, the, the uh, media day they did before the sort of the rush to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the uh, Adidas uh, store yeah. in, in New York City. And we got to catch up. We you saw a couple uh, episodes. I think last week, uh, Ben Sweat was on. That's and, right. And now we have same, to- same uh, thing. But Sean Johnson, they're going to go play a game in Chicago during this break. That's right. Behind closed a little doors. Scrimmage. And he played in Chicago for a long time. So maybe he gets to go visit his old friend. And that garbage pizza, which I think I bring up right away. So okay. why don't we go to that? Why don't we go to this interview? <laughs> well, the man who brings you the milk, okay? <laughs> That's right. Okay, the man who knows that New York pizza is better than anything Chicago's ever served <laughs> a day in their life. He said right. this before the cameras went out. <laughs> and actually, Paulie G is a homie of mine. Yeah. But I don't know if you know. I could I could yeah. hook that up. I'm not kidding. He's a hey, good. I, I knew that. He's I a dear that. friend. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Sean Johnson. <laughs> Uh, what you want to think is interesting. Did, did the nickname carry over from Chicago? The milkman didn't, did really, it. It it didn't did really stick. Yeah, but it, it did with the teammates, so. Okay, okay. Like, oh, posters yeah? blasted all over the, the training room, you know? So it's like, they, they took it on, but our fans haven't yet. So I'm, I'm not sure our fans really know about it. Well, milkman means something different here. It's usually like... The guy you look more like, but your mom ain't telling you why. Yeah, I don't want to be known as that. So that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. You know? It's a little something different here. Right, right. right. Um, you know, look, we're playing. You're playing in these big stadiums, playing in this small field at Yankee Stadium. As a goalkeeper, is that does that make sort of your positioning different 
when you have like these larger fields? I don't think so. No? I think it's all the same. Yeah, it's just on a smaller scale, right? Like yeah. everything's basically the same. Um, dimensions a little bit smaller, but the games play all the same. You know, so okay. for us, I think you know we've gotten used to it. Obviously, you know, so. It's our home field, so yeah, we got we got to take advantage of it. Might as well. It, it, it's been beautiful to see. I think, I think when you when you got here from Chicago, I think a lot of people thought like, oh, what's what does Sean Johnson have left? And then we see you at NYCFC thriving, making it to the national team. What has been that experience uh, like for you? Just like kind of. I don't want to say being a cast off, but like being underestimated and now being on the national team. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, man, like, you know, people will think what they want to think. You know, at the end of the day, you got to be confident in your own abilities. And I knew coming here, you know, it's a big market. Like, you want to have that pressure to play well every game. And then coming with, the, with this locker room, with this coaching staff, with this organization, it was an easy transition for me, you know. And being with the national team before, so, I, like, many people, you know, may or may not know. So, like, from 2011 until now, I've been with the national team you know, yeah, yeah. throughout. So for me, it was just getting myself in, settling down, and then getting back to where I knew I could be. So okay. yeah, just have to reach another level, man. That's what the city's all about. So You heard it here first. He don't read the comments on the internet. <laughs> he don't care about the haters. There was another thing. You, you had, you had uh, when you went back to Chicago, you had gone to a, a barber that you normally go to, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, true. And yeah. You, okay. Yeah, yeah. So what, uh, have you, I know barbers, we have relations. You have relationships with barbers. Wait, right? my barber called me cheating on him. Dude. I ain't playing. Tough. 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 He called me at the laundromat. Tough. I was like, oh no. Not easy. Not easy. Have you have you found someone of like equal capability out in New York? Are you do you, do you look forward to playing in Chicago so that you can or go do back? We need to, to introduce you to some Dominicans who will get that shape up right. Listen, listen. I will say that my barber here has kept me nice. Okay. But Drew has been the day one homie, right? right so right. he's the one, no matter what, if I need something like later on down the road, if I'm somewhere where I don't know, yeah. I can phone him up and be like, yo, I need you now, right? <laughs> so he's, I trust him with everything. But right. obviously there's some talented barbers in New York, man. So I'm, I'm always down to explore. But like you said, man, once you settle down with one, yeah. if catch you with another one, you don't, you don't want to be there. I had to do it. I had to do it to him. He got lazy on me. Right, right. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. Sometimes right. I get lazy. Sometimes but I lied. I'm like, it ain't what it looks like. Right, right. I'm just sitting here, bro. Yeah. I'm just chilling. Bro. I don't even know her like that. Yeah. Um, but um, now that you, you know, sort of are established as a goalkeeper that everyone knows and loves, um, certainly for NYCFC fans, uh, can't talk for the other side of the river. If you could play in any other position, you'd be like, yo, give me a shot. What, what position do you think that'd be? Oh, striker. Easy. Why is it always yeah, the goalkeepers think they should be strikers forever? Yo, because we've been blocking goals for time. Like, yeah, we, we want some glory. Like, let, let, us, let us be the ones to, like, win the game, you know? You're seeing the do's and the don'ts, and you're like, I think I can do the do's. Right, right. Yeah. We study them all the time, so, okay. like, maybe we can go out there and try it sometime, you know? Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, look, you posted that you love Paulie G's pizza. Yes, yes. I'm not yes. kidding you. Do you like the wood-fired one or the slice shot? I like the wood-fired one. Wood-fired one. Yeah. I'm not kidding. I'll hook it up. Yeah. Pauly, legitimately a good friend of mine. I'll text him a photo of us. Of yeah, I don't know if you saw, last year we took Tommy McNamara out for pizza. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. So and maybe that could happen one day. Yeah, for you, man. Yeah, be dope. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. literally a pizza expert. Legitimately, right. that's why half the logo has pizza on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's yeah. also a great Chicago style place here in case you miss. The old ways, that's place okay. called Emmett. That's okay. Okay, yeah. all right, good. Nothing wrong with it. Maybe yeah. you want to weigh yourself down. That's, that's, that's old news. That's old news. Yeah. That's old news. All right, well, very Sean, good. Dude, thank you so much, yeah, man. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. What an interview, huh? Sean Johnson's a great dude, Matt. Cool. Great guy. And also, I was I was impressed that he knew who we were. Well, of I'm course, all... he knows who we are. Alexis. We're on TV more than him. He's on once a week. We're on twice. <laughs> what you talking about? Okay. We ain't got no off season. <laughs> Step your game up, my guy. <laughs> okay, yeah. Work during your off season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, if you really want it. Yeah. <laughs> How hard you want to be a TV star, dude? <laughs> no, that was uh it's always it's always very flattering when when the players themselves cause you assume that the players are just like tunnel vision, they're not paying attention to whatever, but they're like Nah, you're all I watch. Yeah. <laughs> they also have a lot of free time. You forget, like, they don't practice eight hours a day, right? Yeah. So, like, they have to sometimes... It's, it's funny to me that they consume soccer-related stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which also means we got to watch what we're saying. <laughs> because <laughs> they will <laughs> approach us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're all dramatically more in shape than us 
guys. And sometimes you. bigger than <laughs> us. Especially goalkeepers. Goalkeepers are not, there's not one like, there's not one goalkeeper in MLS that I'm like, I could take that guy. No, there's especially that. when they make a fist with those bear paws they call hands. <laughs> you seen these things? Yeah. They're, they're they got it. feet. They got feet for hands, dog. <laughs> so uh, I did want to talk about a, uh, a, a sad story oh, that do we have to. We have to do this because um, it, it is, it is a thing that is, it, it, it's a problem, obviously, in in soccer. It's in global soccer. It's it's, it's everywhere. A, it's a thing we deal with here. Yeah. Uh, it's just at an at an extreme uh, that happens. You know, it happens in 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 European soccer, and it's just at a at, at a level that you would hope that there would be some sort of progress. Uh, it also can't be ignored at this point. You know, it, yeah. it just sucks that look. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a show. That's supposed to be funny. That's a comedy show. And now our television show, which I think we've done what? This is the 11th episode. Give or take. Uh, and yeah, 10th, I think. Someone yeah, in my ear just okay. said correct. So <laughs> I'm right about something. Uh, and what we've had to talk about racism in soccer, what, four out of the 11 at this point? Oh, sure. That's not a good ratio, you guys. Yeah, we would. It's tiring. We would not. Uh, we would rather not talk about it. But in England, uh, in Bulgaria, uh, England was playing against Bulgaria in their stadium, in a stadium that was, um, you know, uh, because of previous uh, racist chanting and race, racist uh, uh, just incidents. They had uh, a very limited amount of, of supporters uh, in the stands, uh, but the people that were there. Or took that opportunity to continue their racist chance to uh, put up, uh, you know, you know, just a Nazi, uh, uh, you know, hand gestures yeah, and displays and, and yeah. booing every time a black player touched the ball. It's just absolutely insane. I mean, and these people aren't even covering their faces, the most of them. I mean, you're seeing photos of them there. They're proud. They're proud to be racist. They're proud to be disrespectful. They have signs that say respect racism. Yeah. I and mean, what kind of, those are, it's, first of all, it's an oxymoron. It's very much an oxymoron. You know I mean? <laughs> now, you're, you are morons, but yeah. this is also yeah. an oxymoron. If some of y'all need oxy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that would stop you from coming to the game. Maybe uh, uh, oxycodone in your system. <laughs> so if you don't know what the, what, the, the the plan is to to handle this stuff. Um, well, a guy quit the the head of the Romanian uh, the Bulgarian Bulgarian. Sorry, the Bulgarian. My shouts to Romania. <laughs> uh, the head of the Bulgarian uh, soccer federation quit. Uh, what's his name? They, his nickname is Bobby. They call him Bobby. Okay. Uh, Borislav Mikhailov. Mikhailov. You knew I was gonna mess that last part. <laughs> I, don't even know I almost you... didn't say Bobby. Correct. <laughs> yeah, the look. The look on Christian's face as I attempted to do the last name. Yo, He's like, "Well, this is gonna be President fun. of Bulgaria, Bobby Digital." Yeah. Out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bong bong. <laughs> Like I like because I think you're wrong about that. <laughs> you might be making that one up. You're a RZA multifaceted, and he does not like racism. <laughs> no man, it's just uh, the the but the plan uh, at least for for UEFA for for FIFA is to one um, uh, announce uh, over the PA that that the, the game will be uh, basically suspended if. Um, if if nothing is done, if, if the if the chanting does not stop uh, after that, yeah, the le the reps are allowed to suspend the game. Yes, yes, yes. So, but there's announcement. Uh, basically, there's three steps: uh, announcement made, then uh, the second warning is the players actually step off the field and go uh, basically into the locker room until it stops. Right. And then if it happens again, the game is completely uh, just canceled. So that's one of those three happened here. Well, the first one did happen. Yes, they said please stop. Uh, they said please stop, and then the uh, the the I the second one it, 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 they still chanted. They still did the racist chant and the monkey noises. But the and and props to the captain of the Bulgaria team because he did go up to the the, the supporters uh, and told them, "Hey, you guys need to stop." And that was like a a, a show of at least some courage. Uh, and 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 you know, it, it shouldn't just be on the black players. To, no. to point it out and to say that something should be done. It's it should... also a shame that a player had to be the one to go do that. Uh, sure. but It's just a shame that you have to, you know I mean? You're a player. Like, you're not the one who should go stop the race. I mean, everyone should stop it. You know what I'm saying? But it just shouldn't be happening. The the Federation shouldn't allow this to continue. The Bulgarian team should be docked points of somehow, or they should not be allowed to play competitions for a certain period of time. This should count against them somehow. And I know it's not the player's fault, but what what else can you do? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, 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 it's tiring. It's tiring to. I wish Bobby didn't quit because he was the president, and I, as the vice president <laughs> of, of the, the modeling, modeling club, club yes. could have gone there. I you mean... know what I mean? <laughs> and like we could have had a president to vice president <laughs> sit down. You know? Yes, you, I'm sure you could uh, inspire <laughs> inspire those racists with your, 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 your... when they see the turns. <laughs> 
And they're like, wow, his you grandmother know, was black. <laughs> wow, maybe you know we're what? wrong about these people. I've had this wrong all along. <laughs> you know what? We should all come together <laughs> and maybe learn to do some of those spins on the catwalk <laughs> like my man does. In Eastland and Timberland boots. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. All right. <laughs> we can't solve all the world's problems. But here's one thing we can do is tell you. Without a doubt, who's going to win in the MLS playoffs? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the uh, one thing <laughs> we're pretty confident with. Yeah, that we can do. Solving racism, a little, little bit challenging. Give us some time. <laughs> <laughs> give, I mean, we haven't even, this is only our 11th episode. Come on now. <laughs> Just, uh, give it at least 15. I was going to say, wait till the 13th, you know what I mean? And then we're really going to deep dive. <laughs> uh, but no, the MLS Cup playoffs are uh, are coming up and they, they're starting this weekend, uh, the, the first round. And the east and western conference uh and it's it, there's there's we we talked about it briefly uh last week but we uh as far as how the teams are gonna uh i don't know even prepare like we mentioned nycfc the teams lafc and uh nycfc have that first round by so uh which is a long time it is a long time the international b- break plus the first round by is, is essentially three weeks of of figuring out what to, what the I hell to do uh, before start you start whittling <laughs> wood or something. Pick up some hobbies, kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, but it is interesting because last year we did this wasn't the case, right? Where we had uh, the, the the condensed schedule and then the also the condensed uh, playoff structure, so that it all happened between the two international breaks in, in uh, October and November. Right, but it was also the home and away. These are all single game elimination. Yes. So everything's been condensed completely. The schedule for the regular season has been condensed. Some some teams, I think it was Atlanta that played five games in 15 days. Crazy. Everything's been condensed. So it's, it, it begs the question, like, is now that we've gone through the regular season and we're yeah. about to go into the playoffs, is was it a better move to do this? Right. Because a lot of last year we were here complaining like, how come, uh, you know, th- taking this two week break before the MLS Cup final, everybody stops paying attention to it. And now that's not going to be the case. I don't think it was the complaining so much. It was the loss of revenue in the ratings. OK, remember, everyone was complaining that the games were boring or the second leg or the first leg was boring. The second leg was the only exciting one. So everyone should just do one game eliminations. I think with people not watching the first games, I mean, the playoffs have always been the ratings bonanza for MLS. This is where you sort of build up those numbers. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, like if you're trying to save on, you're trying to get like a gas mileage to go up when you just take your foot off the gas going downhill. That's this. <laughs> I mean, you build up your numbers. You know what I mean? That's a very specific reference okay. that I get. So I don't like All to right. see the point now. President of business, Alexis <laughs> Guerrero. Vice president of business modeling, Alexis. Okay. It's a thing, ma. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, my mother saw me f- model in a fashion show more than she seen me do stand up. <laughs> embarrassing. Which, which would she be more disappointed by? Who Both knows? equally, <laughs> turns out. So the uh, uh, so, but yeah, it does sort of. Now that we're in uh, the sort of the, the place we're in, like from my perspective, I and seeing all the complaints about how the regular season went from the players about uh, the too many games uh, in in a. Short schedule, uh, in in that like uh, um, short amount of time, I, I, I sort of side. I think I would have been fine with if we never did this, if we never did the condensed schedule and got into this place where uh, the, the, there is this long break in between. You know what I mean? Adding more playoff teams. I, I think I you sound like a dad leaving a family. I'm fi- <laughs> like, I would have been I fine. I didn't want the kids. So <laughs> I would have been fine with it the way it was before. But there I, was I, everyone was worried about injuries. I, we haven't seen that many big injuries. It seems like most of the big name players are going to be back. Even Alejandro Bedoya is probably going to be back for the start of the season, uh, start right. of the postseason. So, I mean, what's the big deal? That was everyone's complaint. I actually like when things finish quicker. And I know that sounds hilarious coming from a guy who does a podcast <laughs> and a television show that lasts a long time. I get it. I get it. Um, so the the, the first round in the, uh, the Eastern Conference, uh, Toronto against DC United. And this the, uh, one of these teams are going to be playing NYCFC. And it's at Toronto. Who would you rather see? Play NYCFC. Play again with NYCFC. I'm going to have to say DC United. I think DC United is a Because NYCFC team tends to have their number, too. Yeah, and they play uh, they play them pretty well uh, at home. That's my my, my best guess. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but but and uh, Philadelphia against the New York Red Bulls is I I think the probably the more unpredictable game. Also going to be super fun to watch. It's yeah, so very fun, very fun to watch. Anyway, the uh, the the next one, Atlanta against New England. Uh, so far, I'm saying Toronto wins. I think Philly wins, and I think Atlanta wins. Yeah, let's let's fill out the bracket completely. Who do we so? It, 
Uh, you Toronto, th- Philly, Atlanta. Okay, get through. All right. So Toronto versus NYCFC. NYCFC wins. They go to the Eastern Conference Final. Against whom? Against Atlanta. Okay. Uh, but I, I would love to see it be against the Rebels. I think that game would be wild. That would be insane. I don't think the Rebels get out of the first. And it's not because I don't like the Rebels or anything. I just think Chris Armas hasn't settled yet. And I don't know who the Sims start. Who, start, who starts there? You know what I mean? There's a bunch of players that are sort of moving around. Uh, I don't, there's nothing, doesn't seem anything settled there where yeah. I think uh, a team like Philadelphia comes in knowing what their best options are. Okay. You know? uh, I, I think out of all the, uh, out of all the away teams uh, in the Eastern conference, I think the Red Bulls have the best chance. The Rebels to, play the best on the road out of anybody I'd in the league. I think. Through. So um, I, I'm gonna, in these types of games, I'm going to say, you think Kaku starts, you think they start Kaku? Yes, I do. Uh, I think, okay. uh, I think Toronto, um, I think I think Philly will get through. I think Philly will get through, and Atlanta, and then uh, so it'll be. So we're the same. So NY, so Atlanta versus uh, Philly. Yeah. Who do you think wins there? Um, and this will be in Atlanta. I think Atlanta wins this. Yeah. At home, at, at this point, you got to start favoring the home team. So it's Atlanta versus NYCFC yeah. in New York. In New York, which you got to give that to NYCFC. I Atlanta so. can't play on a small pitch. All, on most likely City Field, as you may have, if you're watching the. Uh, uh, American League Championship Series. The Yankees, yeah. uh, they, I think they tied 1-1 yeah. uh, with Houston. Uh, so this is, I know this is a soccer show, but we're paying attention to the baseball results. Yeah. Uh, because In order to play the game. <laughs> to, to determine where the game is going to be played, whether it's Yankee Stadium or City Field. So Atlanta versus New York. I give it to New York. Yeah. So and New York moves on. To the finals. To the finals. Western so, Conference. LAFC versus who do you think? Minnesota or LA Galaxy? I think I think LA Galaxy are gonna I think through. Minnesota are gonna go. Okay. I'll go with yours. Let's go Galaxy. Salt Lake versus Portland. I think Salt Lake. Salt Lake moves on. Here. I think Portland moves on. So so far we have an opposite bracket. Seattle versus Dallas. I, I I'm gonna have to see Seattle. I All right, me Dallas, too. But I think All right, Seattle so I think Seattle. Time. I think Portland, and I don't care what you say. So Portland versus Seattle. <laughs> That's a great game. That'll be a great game. That's a great game. It's gonna be at <laughs> Seattle. Yes. That's pretty great. So, who do you think wins? Uh, at, oh, this is gonna be a tough one. Um, out of the two, uh, Seattle. Well, you know, season. I'm gonna have to say Seattle because yeah. of Brian Fernandez. I don't think it will be playing. I think so as well. Yeah. Uh, so Galaxy versus LAFC, wild game. This is, I mean, this is everybody wants to see this. This is wild. And we might go to this. I, I based on results, I, I'm gonna have to say the Galaxy. I don't think the LAFC can defeat Zlatan. All right, so. That means it's Galaxy versus Seattle in the Western Conference Final. Yeah. Who do you think wins out of that? Uh, If that is in, that's going to be in Seattle, I'm going to say Seattle. All right, so it's Seattle versus NYCFC NYCFC at Red Bull Arena (laughs) for MLS Cup. (laughs) Who do you think wins that? Um, Seattle NYCFC uh, in New in New York or New Jersey? It's got to be NYCFC. I, I'm gonna wow. NYCFC. All right, I have a slightly different bracket. I don't think LAFC gets bumped out. I think they beat Galaxy, but it would be wild to watch <laughs> NYCFC win their first MLS Cup in Rebel Arena. <laughs> Heads would explode. A Rebel will start to fight for another stadium. They want another stadium. <laughs> I don't want anything with this stadium. Back to MetLife. <laughs> <laughs> Where you know what? Where the Metro stars again? Yeah. <laughs> Bring the whole thing down. We're only drinking Monster. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back Timmy Howard. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? Thank you so much for listening to the episode. I just want to bring in with a word from one of our sponsors, Shiva's Regal, because they have this amazing event I want you to go to. Join Shiva's Regal at its House of United event on Saturday, October 20th at Maps Backlot at 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's in Miami at Maps Backlot at 10 a.m. Eastern as Shiva celebrates the launch of its 13-year-old expression in partnership with Manchester United Football Club. Wow. This special blend pays homage to Sir Alex Ferguson and his 13 Premier League title wins under his management. The House of United event will bring Manchester United Football Club's Old Trafford Stadium from Manchester to Miami. Miami with complimentary specialty Shiva's cocktails, soccer-inspired activities, and appearance by former Manchester United goalie Gary Bailey. You won't want to miss this event. Now, it's for 21 and over only, so please enjoy Shiva's responsibly.
Yes, I love it when uh, we, we, we do these uh, uh, episodes with guests because they usually do not know that you're about to scream, yeah, baby, right and next to them. No one knows <laughs> that the guy who looks like he's pretty lethargic <laughs> is just about to spring up with a whole lot of energy. All right, about to pop up and like, whoa, this was not what I expected I'll at save all. save it. I'll save it when the cameras and the lights are on, baby. <laughs> okay, it's a nice little Halloween prank. You just yeah. scare them. Uh, <laughs> no, man, this is uh, really exciting because uh, we have a, a fun show planned today but we're, we're excited to welcome our guest today of right. the new york cosmos alexis please introduce our guest guys you've seen him playing for uh the azerbaijani team Karabag. you've seen him playing for the albanian national team you've seen him playing for the new york cosmos now and you're about to see him right here in our studio sitting next to me ladies and gentlemen let's drive and put your hands together for the one the only ansi angoli <laughs> come on ansi what's up man how you doing, guys? Yeah. yeah, too much energy. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit more than uh, than most of our guests sort of expect. But thank or you, want or, or want sometimes. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much uh, for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, you recently joined the New York Cosmos. Uh, can you please just uh, talk a little bit about uh, why you made the decision and now I'm living in the states now? Uh, what what made what uh, made the move uh, out here to to join the New York uh, Cosmos? First of all, first of all, I I have to thank you guys because for sharing this positive energy, you know, this this uh, afternoon. Of course. Hope it don't get so high, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not prepared for this, but yeah. so and uh, for your question, uh, so I play professional uh, many years in uh, starting from Albania, Switzerland, Finland, then I move to Azerbaijan 10 years. And so I have to make a decision for last years of my career, including my family that lives here in the uh, States, New York. And, uh, so this was the reason, of course. Uh, I'm playing with a team that is a, I mean, for me, is a brand. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how for other guys yeah. here in America is, but for me is a big name in uh America and Europe also, so I'm very happy to be here and to play for a huge club like uh, New York Cosmos. Now, when it when you were sort of coming up in in the different leagues that you were coming up in, I heard, I read that you became a professional at nine years old. You came into the academy at nine years old, I should say. You can be a professional at nine years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, very, it's a little bit difficult, yeah. you know. I, you know what? Maybe making wallets or something, but not <laughs> <laughs> non soccer. I, I start I start my journey with soccer at nine year old yeah, in uh, my homeland, Albania, Tirana. Uh huh. Was not so when I think now was a little bit difficult, not so easy, but of course the condition there was like that and I have to accept to move forward, to work and uh, to become a professional then later on to become a professional in the age of uh, 16. Wow. So uh, I remember sometimes when I was a kid with the academies of Tirana, I, we ride a bike three three. Uh, guys, for example, for six, seven miles, we were in, with one bike, you know, three guys. So it was not so yeah, so easy. Three guys on one bike. One bike, yeah. So Who did the pedaling? That guy had the energy <laughs> for the training. Every day. <laughs> every, we changed every day. So. Whoever did the training <laughs> had the biggest quads, right? <laughs> that was extra training. So, uh, now it's funny, you know, when you, when you say this, but uh, at that time it was a little bit dangerous. Yeah, of course. Yeah, riding in the... With the roads, difficult roads of Tirana, but so um, the 16 uh, age, I became a professional and play my first game with. Uh, I signed the first uh, professional contract with uh, my homeland club Tirana, and so there it started. You know the professional yeah. career. And you are you ended up uh, become also becoming the uh, the captain of the Albanian national team. What uh, yeah. getting to that point? I mean, and, and getting to represent your country and also to be at that position of leadership. What does it mean to you? Uh, and, and and sort of how did you sort of put your life in that path to kind of get there? Are you sure I uh, I, I have to talk about this because it's a long. <laughs> <laughs> So many years. We got all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah. Now, first of all, was uh, to play for my uh, national team, Albanian national team, is a dream for every child. I mean, every every player in Albania is like a dream. So, 
uh, for me the first dream uh, becoming at that at this moment I recognize that I become a professional you know not signing the first contract because when you play with uh, your national team is like uh, something big you know yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in an Albania honor. it's an honor yeah, yeah. it's a big honor and uh, it was a long journey we have uh, we have uh, our ups and down with the national team but uh, uh, we had a good uh, good last years we had a good performance so i'm very proud for what i did with the national team and i i, I hope i live uh, something good playing with this team i mean what what springs to mind is the the euros uh, you guys sort of had sort of uh, some really great games in the last Euros. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that was 2016? 16, yeah. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. I wanted, you know, I was looking for that jersey. I couldn't find it anywhere. I think it was made by Macron, right? Yeah. Macron, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was looking for it everywhere. I was like, I want this jersey so bad. Yeah, it was was a very pretty nice jersey. Very yeah. nice. Now, one of the things that, bring, that comes up to mind when you think of the Albanian national team are some of the players from Albania that had to leave and now play for other national teams. In particular, and I, I hope this isn't offensive, but people make the two birds with their hands. Yeah. Uh, Shaka, Shakiri. This is the eagle. The eagle. The our eagle. our flag. Your flag. Is, yeah, yeah. is the eagle. They did that, and then they sort of they were it, it was viewed as negative in their countries to yeah. represent Albania. How does that feel seeing players that had to leave Albania reaching success and knowing that the next generation of Albanian players are going to get to stay home like you did and get the chance to play for the national team? I mean, I understand some players. Uh, for example, you you spell Jaka or yeah. Shakiri. They born in Switzerland. They grow uh -huh. up there, so. I respect their decision, you know, uh, even if they are playing for Albanian national team was much better, you know, because they helped uh, the country. But I respect uh, their way and uh, they are doing very well uh, with the uh, Switzerland national team or Germany. Yeah. Mustafi, for example, we play World Cup. He win the World Cup with the German national team. So playing with these national teams also... A part of them they represent, you know, Albanian. Right. So we feel proud, proud about 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 these guys also. That's good. You're like, but just bring the World Cup trophy. Let me hold it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Auntie, I did want to ask you about your your time in, in Karabag. And you are you you have over 200 appearances with with the club. Obviously, uh, the the club is very dear to you. They they clearly re, uh, respect you. Uh, uh, and I, I reading here, you had uh, your in your your send off game. You had 10,000 people uh, in attendance just to for, you know for to show you the support for you. Uh, your I, like. Look, I'll be honest, I'm not necessarily watching the Azerbaijan League day to day or week to week, but I do see Karabag regularly in Champions League. Uh, you have a lot of Champions League uh, caps. What is, uh, what, what, one, what does the, the club mean to you and, and being at, at playing at such a high level in, uh, in your league? And then also, I don't know how many people uh, on our show have played in the, in the UEFA Champions League. You, I believe he's the first. I don't think I did not. I did not. I also, Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> Well, what is uh what is it like, especially for the, you know the 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 clubs from the you know quote unquote smaller nations? Uh, what does it mean to play in those tournaments, and how how does psychologically how do you prepare for to play against these big clubs? First of all, I I, I have to start from the beginning. You know, for when I get this offer from this club and from Azerbaijan, well, I say, where is Azerbaijan? I never heard of it. <laughs> sure. And it's a little bit scary name when you hear Azerbaijan. It's yeah, been it's long. Very long. So <laughs> <laughs> and then I go there. I see. I go to meet these people of the club, the coach, and this. I see. Hey, they have a good team here. You know, they work very good, professional way. We start our. It was not easy the beginning. First three years, uh, three four years it was not so easy. But step by step, build a good team, the coach, the club, uh, many things come together. And uh, of course, the results, last six years, results of, of uh, this club, they are fantastic, you know. I mean, with the budget that they have, you know, comparing with the teams that play in Champions League is unbelievable, you know. So uh, we play five time Europa League group stage one time champions league this was the the 
cherry in the cake, what yeah. I call. So it was a beautiful, long 10 years, long journey, but very beautiful for me. But they also, they recently won uh, their league and you went back, you were back and they celebrated with you like you were there that day scoring goals. Yeah. How did that feel? How did it feel to get carried by the other players? That's got to be an amazing feeling. Like I've tried a couple times to hop on his shoulders. It hurts him. Doesn't you know really what I mean? Out too well. <laughs> you know, I'm like, carry me, you know, <laughs> you won't do it. How does it feel to, to, to know that you can step away from the club, but still be beloved and still feel like the players and the fans still feel like you are and will forever be a part of Carabag? I mean, it's it's a beautiful feeling, you know, for not only for me, for every player, you know, when have this warm for welcome from the club or from the people there, supporters, it's very, it's very, very beautiful feeling. So <laughs> I have this, when I come back now, I turn back in time. I I remember when I go, when I went there, they asked me, hey, where are you from? Albania. Hmm. When I leave the country, they start, the people start to speak Albanian, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, you they learn, the whole yeah, they, yeah. Not, not all the people, you know, but no, the, all, yeah. uh, some of supporters, for example, or inside the club, people who work, they start to speak a little bit Albanian, you know, Google some words. and uh, I, don't, I don't think I know any Albanian. I don't. I, I asked him to tell me some curse words in Albania, my buddy, but he, <laughs> he told me no. Don't do that. Don't do that to Ansi. How do you say hello in Albanian? I'm just curious. Hello, uh, Sie. Sie. Mirdita. Like, Mirdita? Mirdita. Okay. Was, see okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Mirdita? <laughs> Cause that's, I know Spanish <laughs> Cause it's and that's a wildly close. <laughs> Are the language is similar because I feel like it might be. <laughs> also, how'd you know my, my nickname in high school? <laughs> uh, uh, Ozzy, I did want to ask uh, about now that you are in New York, what is that? How is it adjusting for you and your family? I also, is your family here already? Yeah. Oh, okay. My family lives here for uh, 10 years. Oh, that's great. Oh, wow. My wife, my son born last year. So, oh, awesome. Congrats. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, Thank you. Great. So I, I did hear a, uh, a this note about you, a little, little rumor. I, I, apparently you are a huge fan of Dunkin' Donuts. But not the coffee, just the donuts. Donuts, yeah. You, you just know. like... Not only Dunkin' Donuts, you know, just Cri 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 Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Okay. Other... I got to be honest, you don't look like a big donut <laughs> fan. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. You look like you, you smell the donut and that's it. <laughs> I look like I eat the donut. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't agree. Don't agree so quickly. Honestly. You look actually you look a little bit like uh, Boston cream. Yeah. I look, <laughs> Yo, you, you got a nice cream filling, Alexa. Wow. We make a nice, nice, nice commercial to donuts. That'd be a good, a very plump donut. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god sick auntie burn yeah, yeah. i love it <laughs> roasted by auntie angrily yeah, that's uh but what i mean are, would the donuts that didn't become a part of your training back in azerbaijan did it yeah yeah my wife my wife visited me when i used to play there she visited me uh, uh every month i mean yeah okay, every okay. month she comes she stay two weeks three weeks so anytime she come I say, don't forget the donuts. Don't forget the, don't forget the <laughs> I'm donuts. not letting you in the house if you don't bring it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the this is That's the best sure. advertisement for Dunkin' Donuts. For sure. How is this not your spokesperson? He called his wife and said, "Don't forget the donuts." I yeah, know. I haven't seen you in a month. <laughs> don't forget them donuts. Yeah. That's wonderful. What's your favorite donut? Can I guess? You said Boston cream. Boston I was cream is suggest good. Boston cream. All right. Boston cream is good. Okay. Glazed oh. also. It's, it's not not too sweet. I feel like Boston cream is just like uh, the filling is like is too too much. At least in my opinion. Yeah, of course you would think that. I think it's perfect. <laughs> we got to take it to Donut Pub. We got to take it to Donut Plant. So many great donut places here in New York. Yeah, there's a lot, yeah. there's a lot of, um, uh, I guess, boutique donut places. Yeah. That's the best way to... <laughs> hipster. Hipster donut gourmet, places. Yes, gourmet donut places. I don't know if, if those are a little too fancy uh, for you, but I think it's, you know, it's something you should consider. Uh, for me, it's no problem. If you do donuts, donuts, it's okay for me. <laughs> okay. No Fried dough. Let's <laughs> Absolutely. Let's Doesn't get matter it. the brand, you know? <laughs> donuts. Yeah, donuts. That's all I want. Me and you could be best friends. I don't know if you know this. Uh, except I dip mine in coffee. You're not just a big soccer fan. You're also a big boxing fan. If you didn't play soccer, was there another sport that you think you would have excelled in? Uh, I never think about that, you know? But I like, like you say, I like too much uh, watching box. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime I have the chance, you know? Because we normally we play Saturday and 
Saturday, mostly of the fights they are Saturday. But when I have the chance to watch box, I watch it. I nice. I like I like too much. Yeah? yeah. Who's your favorite boxer of all time? Well, they are many, and in this moment is Triple G, for example. Yeah. Triple G is my favorite. Uh, Canelo also. Yeah, Canelo's great. I I, I, I like this uh, middleweight. You like middle more actions, you know? Yeah, they do. They throw the hands. They, they fast. throw, yeah, fast. So the heavyweights are too late. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One punch, finish. I like the guys who weigh like 110 pounds. <laughs> Just like two school kids in a fight. You know, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> That's why he's always on World Star. <laughs> Just watch it. High school right. fights. Uh, you mentioned you're friends with Ishmael Trajuri Shradi, who plays here in New York as well. Um, you guys have never played on the same team before, though. No, no, we never played the same team, but we know each other um, since I come here. I oh, meet cool. him, so it's a very good guy and uh, also a very good uh, professional play player. You know. Yeah, and now you guys get to be sort of in the same city. And, and just sort of in general, you've had family here for the last 10 years. You've been in New York a bunch of times. But what does it mean to live in a city like New York? You know, like, I don't know what Toronto is like, but Toronto to New York, I'm assuming, is a little different. What does it feel like to live here? Yeah, of course. In the beginning, there are some uh, difficulty. Everywhere you go is uh, difficult, but uh, now it's going pretty good. So, uh, special. The difficulty here is about the traffic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> have you been <laughs> on the subway? Yeah, I have been. Yeah, of and you're like, I don't uh, like it. <laughs> <laughs> it smells bad to a lot of people. Yeah, sometimes, I think, yeah. 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 But, I think it's perfect. Yeah. You know? I like a city that smells like pee. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> uh, do, do you have any other friends? Are you are you trying to get any other players to come uh, come play in New York? Uh, not in not now, but maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah. Very Why cool. not? And uh, now that you are uh, with the Cosmos, uh, obviously, uh, you know, very owned by a very public, popular figure, Rocco Camiso. What is, um, I, I don't, you know, at least to me, Rocco is just like this larger than life figure, just a very charismatic person. Was there anything as far- Seems like everyone's uncle. Exactly. Was there anything about him that sort of drew you to the club as far as deciding what, what was the, the next team that you wanted to, to go to? Oh, not really, but uh, like you say, Rocco looks like this in in in, in uh, TV, maybe or. Yeah. But uh, I mean, in, in normal life, it's like normal people, you know. So yeah, yeah. he talk with with all people the same way. So uh, I didn't talk with uh, with Rocco when I, when I before I come here. I talk with uh, Joe Baron, is the vice president vice of the president, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I have a very good relation with him and also with uh, Rocco. And as far as your, a, a lot of times here in um, with within American soccer, people are very critical of how it how it is, right? So Rocco has been definitely known. He wants um, pr promotion and relegation. He wants to be able to get the Cosmos into the first division and earn their opportunity for things like that. What is your opinion on American soccer, and how do you think you can uh, like contribute and help it kind of maybe improve in any way? Uh, I mean, in general, the American soccer is growing. So last year, uh, you can see also the stadiums. They are the stands are pretty full with people. Also, the, the level is pretty good. I mean, MLS major major soccer league is is going not bad. It's going good. Yeah, to say the truth. Uh, for Cosmos, uh, I mean, I know all the problems. You know that Cosmos have with the Federation, with the lawyer suite and things like this. But uh, for me, my opinion is that Cosmos has to be, uh, must have a place for Cosmos in Major Soccer League because uh, football is not only like I see, you know, yeah. maybe I, I am wrong, but like I see, f football is not only business, you know, sometimes it's also traditions. So Cosmos is very... Uh, is a very traditional team in uh, yeah. America. So my opinion uh, has to be an agreement and Cosmos has to play one day as soon as possible for me in the uh, Major Soccer League. Yeah, that's great. I mean, look, there's so many fans that want it to change, uh, but the Cosmos... They have a really dedicated fan base. Uh, the the five uh, the Borough Boys and uh, the points. Brigade. Uh, there there's a there's a lot of people that clearly love uh, love the club. 
and you come from a, a club, the, the few times that I've seen Carabag uh, play, whether it's Europa or Champions League, very intense fans, fans that love the club. Um, there's not, it doesn't matter where it is, there's a connection with the fans. And ha have you seen any of that yet from the Cosmos fans? I mean, Carabag is not a, uh, I think he's a 28 years club. Yeah. Uh, so he's 29, maybe. So it's not so old team, you know, old yeah. club. And the, he have so much uh, fans when he play in Europa League, Champions League, Champions, Championship games. Uh, so what about Cosmos? He's a 50 years club or 60 yeah. years. So if Cosmos play in a major soccer league, we'll have the same public, I think, same fans. Because uh, the club have, the this club have his own uh, loyal supporters. Yeah, this is very important, you know, for one team. For 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 one club, it's very important to have your loyal supporters that follow you many years ago. Yeah. You know, so I think uh, if Cosmos one day will will uh, be back to the top leagues, uh, maybe stadium full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for but sure. What does it mean to like, uh, especially when you see, uh, you know, I you know I grew up seeing like the the videos of Pele playing for the Cosmos and what what does it sort of mean to you to play for the same club that uh Pele played for it must I mean, it must be kind of wild yeah what is one of the reasons that uh, uh that I chose to 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 play for this club you know it's not only uh, familiar or other reasons but also playing for a club that have history, you know, in the past and also now. Yeah, yeah. So this is one of the reasons that uh, why I chose to play to play for this team. It's very cool. And speaking of the fans, like if there's something that you could tell the fans, because I know right now you're part of the Members Cup. You're at the top of the of the uh, standings, which is great. Top of the table there. Uh, what five wins, no losses. Um, what is it? Something that you think the fans should know about you? What is it that you want to say to the fans? Anything at all? I mean, the fans, which fans? Cosmos fans? Cosmos fans, Cosmos yeah. fans. The other fans, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Cosmos fans. I think now they they know everything, you know. Yeah. Internet connect all the people around the world. So they have all my uh, information or some... If, if they want to know something special, they can call me or and I can take a coffee with them, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, don't say uh, that because we have a friend named uh, Patrick Inferno. Who is, <laughs> you'll, you'll Trust me, you'll meet him. He is a massive Cosmos fan. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to bring donuts to games. He's going to bring donuts and mate. He <laughs> drinks mate. Like, I have to meet like, him. I have to meet will, this guy. Trust me, you will meet him. Whether you like it or not, you're going to meet Patrick Inferno. Absolutely. Just to bring the donuts. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, yeah, just to bring, bring donuts. I might bring donuts. Get to hang out with Auntie Angeli. Definitely the way to Auntie's heart, right? Yeah, <laughs> and mine. Bring me donuts, uh, especially for mentioning your name on the show. Uh, well, listen, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, I want to, you know, wish you the best of luck in in the season. Um, and you know, it's just been it's been great to sort of see all the things you've got to do and see what you get to do here. Thank you, guys. Thank you for invitation and. Uh Thank you for sharing this uh, positive energy with you. Yeah. And of course, we will meet again. Absolutely. Hey, it sounds like a threat. Yeah. <laughs> Which I like. <laughs> we will meet again, Ansi. Thank you again, Ansi Agoli of New York Cosmos. That was pretty cool to have him so on, the show, on the show uh, to, to, to talk about the, the, you know, the, the current and future of donuts. Uh, of donuts. Yeah. <laughs> we, didn't, was great. we didn't realize we were going to bring such a, a, a donut hole expert, yeah. uh, but we got we got one. Called me a Boston cream. All right. OK. Pretty specific. I know what your uh, exact uh, your nickname is going to be on back pages now. <laughs> okay <laughs> come and take a squeeze <laughs> okay hopefully i don't get any on you uh, <laughs> look out you never know what angle it's anyway <laughs> we want to keep this show <laughs> anyway i swear it's a soccer show we're having a good time <laughs> so uh let's talk about the end of year awards for major league soccer That's because right. uh, the, a lot of the the nominations and the finalists for a lot of the categories ha has come out we we already learned that the uh, uh, the winner for Rookie of the Year was uh, Colorado Rapids' own Andre uh, Shinyashiki. He found out via FaceTime. That's right. He he was. It, it's I, a new era. He found out via. Um, the, it was a Colorado Avalanche player uh, who who surprised him and, yeah. and told him, uh, which was cool. 
that 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 the rapids and the avalanche have that kind of synergy uh, out in Colorado. It's pretty dope. Maybe <laughs> some of the avalanche players could have played the beginning of the season and they would have been in the playoffs. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's a, it, it was an option. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, some of the uh, of the, the finalists for the awards. So uh, the Landon Donovan MLS Most Valuable Player finalist, which is why it's even better. Hilarious. That it's called because, because we're going to say these next three names. <laughs> The Landon Donovan MVP <laughs> award might go to either Slatan Ibrahimovic, okay, Joseph Martinez, <laughs> or Carlos Vela. Lo- uh, you, you love to see it. Yeah, it feels. <laughs> it's not meant to confuse you, but it's going to. <laughs> but these are the three finalists, and um, uh, I and mean, Landon hopes to win the Slatan Ibrahimovic <laughs> award. I think he's really excited the for Zlatan it. The Slatan Humanitarian Award. <laughs> <laughs> So built the, the house with his foot. <laughs> so the uh the yeah, those are the finalists. Who who do you got out of those three? You have to I mean, you know, you want to give it to someone like Slotan, but he also throws so much shade at the other players. Sure. Is he your most valuable player? Like if he get if you give him this award, will he not immediately throw it away? That that's that's my main concern. <laughs> or will he just get the Landon Donovan part scratched off? <laughs> And right in Slatan Ibrahimovic, Zlatan Zlatan Ibrahimovic. MLS Ibrahimovic. most valuable player <laughs> goes to Slatan Ibrahimovic. Brought to you by Slatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, so, uh, but obviously Carlos Vela has to win this uh, award. I mean, it would be he great. broke the uh, goal scoring record. Goal scoring record. Um, Good enough week. for me. Yeah, I think that that kind of does it. He's had. He's not only has he had such a great season where he he scored so many goals in uh, in many different games. Did he even get a? He got how many hat tricks did he get this season? I don't think he got that many. Maybe two or three. Um, but which uh, which is not to say that that's nothing, but that was no. Uh, he's been he's, but he's just been consistent. Scorer. He's scoring in a lot of different games, and he's also uh, having the. I mean, what he did to the San Jose Earthquakes alone is. It, it was worthy, like U.S. versus Cuba. Worthy of the <laughs> trip. <laughs> yes, he definitely. I think he 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 broke seven people's ankles. Yeah. Uh, in in that uh, cut particular. up the whole damn team. Uh, defender of the year. This is a a one that I'm surprised that the finalists that are here. Um, because- Michael Parr makes sense because he made. Not not single handedly, but he made Minnesota a defensively from like, from from what they last were last year to this year. It's, Oz, um, Ozzy Alonso had a big part of it as well, of course. Uh, uh, but the, yeah, Ike Parra, Miles Robinson, and Walker Zimmerman are defender of the year finalists. Walker Zimmerman, I get, I get because but defensively, LAFC have been good, right? They, I, yeah. I believe they have uh, allowed the least amount of goals. Um, but as far as it's almost like the MVP trophy is not always um, the to the team that does the best. It's about no. who's more valuable to the, to their team. Yeah. Uh, and in this case, you could understand why Ike Opara is defender of the year. And it's got to go to Ike, even though miles Robinson, I think took the biggest step forward. I agree. But was he I would even to- say miles Robinson is probably the best defender in the league. But I think I the defender of the year I, I, goes to Ike Opara. But it's not valuable. This you're I know, no, but that, that's how I kind of think about it. Well, you're thinking about it wrong. Oh, because okay. it would say that. <laughs> but there's also... Th- it would say most valuable defender of <laughs> but the there's year. But no, there's no parameters on how people vote. People can vote for whoever they want. No, but MLS yeah. doesn't tell people how to vote. Of course. And you could, you know, you could send in some bots to do the voting <laughs> for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, you so it's, uh, all right, Alexis, uh, uh, immediately t- saying it's rigged. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying you can rig it. <laughs> Maybe you should. It's not. No, but no, it's definitely not. Well, this is voted on by the by the media, like the media, so the writers and everybody. And I, I don't understand why the Cooligans do not have a vote. Uh, it, we should get a vote. It, it's. I mean, at this point, we we have a TV show. Forget what I just said. <laughs> we should definitely get a vote. I mean, I feel like by. By us having a vote will probably mean that the the whole system is rigged. You also, know <laughs> can I ask a question? Uh, are there anybody that has a vote that also has a television show? I feel like the answer is no. No. Well, I'm sure there's people Maybe who have one or two. <laughs> I'm sure people are there people that don't have a television show. They get a vote. That is. Yes. We should be ahead of them. <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> we should maybe cut in there. <laughs> you know because- what I mean? Could you take a couple steps back? <laughs> because it's just, I mean, it feels like, uh, like if you little- don't have a television show. Could y'all just take like two steps back? <laughs> maybe two and a half. <laughs> and like Christian Legs just slide right in. Okay. That would be the kind of thing to do. Um, next keeper of the year. I'm surprised at one of these names as well. Bill Hamid, Sean Johnson, Vito Minone, which makes sense. But when you see it at first, 
You're like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Vita Manona has had some incredible, incredible saves. Also, just quietly a great season. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, who was, again, I think of like who was more valuable to their team, which is maybe that's, that's not, not how you the base it. You don't base it on that. I'm no, just, neither do they. they. But they don't tell you how they base it. Who that's, had the best season as a goalkeeper? That's the question. Well, how do you decide who had the best season? It's just like who gave, had the most saves? Look, who, what team has the most points? Bill Hamid, look, the team is kind of almost crumbled at the end of the season. I gotta, I gotta take away some points there. Sean Johnson, yo, just for the for the what? for the letting the ball pass through, you uh, lose at least Minnesota. The, uh, yeah. yeah, and then uh, Vito Minone, you can't I think really point to anything. For me, for at least for this, I would say if you take one of those goalkeepers away from their team. How dramatically would it affect the team? <laughs> then there's no goalkeeper. In <laughs> you need someone in there. Yeah. I mean, this specific one. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you'll the rules be, of the sport. Yeah. You'll give up. You from I feel like you'll give up a few more goals if you have no one, yeah. no netminder at all. This kid's pulling the keeper. <laughs> beginning of the game. No, I think if you take out Bill Hamid from uh, and replace him with That's whoever MVP, you got to get over this. That's not the way you do it, Alexis. No, there's, there is no way to do it. But you take out Bill Hamid from DC United. United and they have a different keeper. I think Bill Hamid. Who had the best season as a goalkeeper? That's the question. Yeah, Bill Hamid. I just say Bill Hamid. All right. Well, then it's- we have to continue talking about, uh, 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 you know, continue this debate over some of these, uh, uh, some of these end of MLS end of year uh, finalists. Some but, of these are very important. Exactly. Uh, which you wanted to talk about coach of the year. The, the Siggy Schmidt coach of the year. Very important. Right now, Bob Bradley. Points leader, right? Broke the record in points. Incredible team, right? Jim Curtin, amazing year, right? No one believed in the Philadelphia Union at the beginning of the season except me. I remember I was saying they're going to be fine. They're yeah, be doing let's go to the things. archives. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, don't confirm. do that. Don't pull it up. <laughs> Just believe in what I said. Uh, and Dome Torrent, right? Yes. Of NYCFC. Also an incredible season. Finished first in the Eastern Conference. I think Dome Torrent deserves a nod. He deserves a serious consideration for it. Okay. I think Jim Curtin deserves a serious consideration for it. Maybe even a nod for it. There's no one beating Bob Bradley. Yeah. It, it, it's difficult to have such a incredible season uh, and, and have, have the MVP on your team and not, uh, and not be coach of the year, but also, you know, LAFC, it's like, they're working with more chips, yeah, you know. They're, they're working with so many more owners as well. I mean, that's why they have a higher budget. Everybody's a millionaire. I could I see. I mean, Bob Bradley should probably win it because of just of the 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 milestones that that LAFC reached, and and realistically, uh, you know, a team being in its uh, second year and and achieving achieving as as much as it has uh, has to give some real consideration uh, for for that award. But Jim Curtin, I think, has to get kind of the biggest. Uh, applause for uh, uh, sort of bringing a a team that kind of they 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 raised their level at least a little bit more. They probably didn't reach what what Philadelphia Union fans really really wanted um, as far as it, well they were in first for so long so I think everyone just took that for granted. But f- to come from where they came from last season with the way the whole the whole team and the fans were feeling about them when they first came in. Incredible. I can see. I mean, Jim Curtin. I, I can see him uh, as far as more than just consideration. I think he he's a, a real candidate for for that award. Did you see the Diego Maradona documentary yet? I think you just told me you did, right? I did. Okay. I did see it. You watched the whole thing. I watched the entire thing. I, you, what I, were your thoughts? Because I thought it was incredible. I know I, it's been out for a few weeks now, but it was very good. I I wasn't a huge fan of the. Um, style of it which is basically um a story being told over b-roll and like kind of interviews that that, like old interviews and it was it must have been an incredible an incredibly difficult thing to put together like yeah archiving or getting all this footage and all this other stuff very very difficult but i loved it i love the look of it i love the pace of it i love the feel of it i think more of these should be done i thought this was absolutely perfect i think it would have been sort of disrupted a little bit if you would have just had like interviews and and had him on today it would have been too much comparing back and forth it was nice to sort of almost following him along just through like news clippings you know sure what's it so the only issue i had with it it was definitely engaging but it felt a little slow at times yeah i like that though did you see the last clip where he finally like admits that it's his son yeah that's pretty great i mean it's just like it, after the whole thing you just realize this dude is just like just a deadbeat dad right like that's like the yeah. frustrating part <laughs> But no, he admitted to being he, uh, like he still is a dad, which is know? still which is a step forward. Better for than me. most yeah. is better than most. But the, <laughs> the finally have the closure to yeah. be like, hey, 
I am a Debbie dad. Right. You know what I mean? Well, it turns out it wasn't <laughs> just that man. Okay, there's going to be a sequel to the yeah, Debbie dad. A couple of them. <laughs> there's, there's as many chapters in this story as there is to Trapped in the Closet, if you remember. <laughs> uh, turns out now a 23-year-old Argentinian woman had just come out and said that that's her father. Um, and they're going through all the tests now to prove it. But she makes the 11th child. So how many children does Diego Maradona have that he claims? Do we know how many? I don't. That, that are with his now ex-wife. Okay. There's also something in this article that says he had a baby with Sergio Aguero's ex-wife. Which I don't think that's true. No, that's- no I think his <laughs> child. His daughter. He, okay, so we've got to Our producer says he's recognized five children. Yeah, yeah. Which is... <laughs> Which is beautiful. It feels like we work for more. <laughs> <laughs> because this is Diego Maradona was the uh, what uh, Antonio Cromarty before yeah, Antonio yeah. Cromarty. Right? It's Antonio Cromarty's favorite soccer player right here, Diego Maradona. Okay, clearly footballers uh, yeah, have yeah. a lot in common, right? Doesn't matter, different sport. <laughs> Similar CTE. <laughs> <laughs> and the C stands for cocaine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but this kind of uh, this kind of behavior is just uh, just absurd. And but when you watch the documentary, you understand. And it it really, I, I, honestly, the 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 documentarians must have had to like. Uh, do a little cocaine just to get the feeling. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, they must have had to. They must have gone through some footage and data and found uh, stuff out. But they we're like, you can't put that in. Well, we can't put it in. We're not sure. He this wasn't co- enough time to talk about these ten other children. <laughs> we don't have fourteen other documentaries to make <laughs> yeah. with the but HBO doesn't have that large a budget. Right. Um, That's the new Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, but it's it, the Game of Cribs. <laughs> it's just. Uh, but the Sergio Guerrero, uh, Sergio Guerrero's wife is, is his daughter. Is is Diego Maradona's daughter? Daughter. Okay. One of them that he claims. One of the, like the, the yeah the obvious like no I was there when it was born. <laughs> oh, uh, you married Sergio like, Girl? Yeah, you my daughter. Yeah, oh, you my daughter now. <laughs> you know what? He's my son. Um, but now that he's got eleven, everyone the joke is now he could start his own. He could field his own uh, soccer team. Yes. Here's what little hidden detail in this article. Did you know? Supposedly, allegedly, three of these children are in Cuba. Okay. Which I didn't even get to do this because Cuba law is seven nothing. I should have. <laughs> Cuba. But Diego Maradona birthed three children. Can one of them play soccer? It's ba, 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 Cuba. Okay, now Yo. there's a silver lining here right? to disowning your children. Yes. <laughs> that Look, you- I'm Cuban and I was disowned by my father. There's a possibility. It's Diego Maradona. <laughs> We've confirmed it. Yeah, it Every Dad, bring the blow. Yeah. We have a glass table right yeah. here. <laughs> this is what we got. Got it. <laughs> Did you imagine being reunited <laughs> with my papa? <laughs> oh my god, and having an Argentinian accent all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, get easy. <laughs> <It's blue. laughs> this is, I mean, quite an astounding <laughs> discovery that we. <laughs> <laughs> what if this is what this whole podcast was about? But this all sort of me. It's, it's. I mean, the dots are kind of coming together. The connecting. Uh, there's, there's a strong possibility. Alexis. You're Cuban. What's your connection to soccer? I honestly don't know. <laughs> it feels I, like hereditary. I th- yeah, I'm drawn to did it. Your, did your mom travel to Napoli at yeah, all at yeah. any time in the last? I feel like he went to Goa. <laughs> if we're gonna be honest, you know what I mean. Go right to the source. Uh, look, <laughs> we, I hope. It, I look for for the sake of uh, uh, you know uh, of families and and children that don't know their father. Right. I hope this is not true. I hope it, it's. Oh no, I hope it is true because there's got to be three kids who don't know their dad is in Goa <laughs> and now they're like wait a minute I mean you can't you can't throw a baseball <laughs> yeah. five feet without hitting three kids that don't know who their father is you know is. there's three kids out there with no dads <laughs> there's three kids out there with no dads who can kick a curveball and they're like there's just something <laughs> odd about this child <laughs> I don't know how Cuban he or she is I mean, exactly you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh you gotta love Hispanic heritage man it's really We're a- ending it on a real a beautiful time on a, on a twist it ain't like Chama on twist I'm the, Alexis Maradona Jr. I love the junior on there they were Cuban the whole time throughout the entire throughout the entire film they were Cuban that's the whole twist <laughs> unbelievable
unbelievable. <laughs> I didn't. Do we take anything seriously? I just want people to know that when we start these segments, we do not know where they will end. This was not planned <laughs> at all. We did not plan to solve the greatest crime <laughs> in history. <laughs> yeah. This is this should be the, the next- Diego Code. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new plot to national treasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nick Cage is gonna go get my DNA test. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So make sure you tune in uh, to see the soccer world cup on football sports network the excitement of six aside football in a 40 team global tournament the action continues all weekend long leading up to the finals this weekend right here on football sports network all right i've caught a couple of those uh soccer games they've been pretty dope actually yeah yeah, yeah. it's like a six aside it's like uh it feels like those the new fifa 20 volta matches you oh, know you know i haven't i've seen just videos of them i haven't downloaded the new fifa yet yeah it's great I got to get it. But I, yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out on Fubo Sports. All right. The label that pays, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, Tupac. Yeah. Right. I'm going to spit out of camera. <laughs> uh, so, again, thank you again uh, for watching and listening to the show. We appreciate you very much. Thank you Absolutely. again, uh, Auntie Agoli, for Absolutely. joining us. Auntie, it was an honor to talk to you. And thanks again to all the Gully Squad members who made the trip down to Philly possible. Yeah, the, yeah. very much. That was a, a cool opportunity. And thanks so. to Fang and Philadelphia Union. That was awesome. absolutely awesome. Exactly. So, uh, thank you again uh, for watching. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And together, what are we? I mean, we're a lot, but we are the Cool Again!